Well, the court will be an issue in 2020, but that's perfectly normal. But the, what the court's really trying to avoid is this perception that it votes and it decides cases politically. And the chief justice in particular, it's his role to be a guardian of the legitimacy of the court and to try find ways to just push back on this idea that the court is, the justices are voting their politics, that they're not really a legal institution. And there will be some red hot issues in front of the high court this year. Take a look at this. Abortion regarding a restrictive Louisiana law. Immigration regarding White House plans to end the DACA program. Civil rights protections for LGBTQ workers. Gun rights, specifically dealing with New York City's one-time ban on transporting a gun outside the home. And executive power regarding President Trump's efforts to shield his financial records from Congress. And we're back with our panel. Mark, Susan, and Josh. Josh. Boy, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts is going to be in the spotlight this year, and it starts with a very partisan Senate impeachment trial that he will be uh, pres presiding over. He's been making comments most recently uh, last week talking about his worry about the, the court being seen as a political institution, uh, and he's always been a fairly reliable conservative vote. The one thing I'm going to be watching in the next six months until the, until the June uh, you know, uh, takes place. The, the, does he try to find some middle ground? Does he try to steer uh, the court decisions on these very, very hot button cultural issues? Immigration, uh, the, the DACA ruling on, under Obama. Does he try to find some pragmatic ground? Because that's what he's been hinting at in his public sta statements lately. And that's a, that's a great point because it's exactly what he did with Obamacare. He found the middle ground where he kept the, kept the law alive, but still made a point about some of the problems with it. But that also paved the way for kind of the, the end to a lot of Obamacare too. I think another really important issue with the Supreme Court is whether or not there may be a vacancy this year. Um, if there is one, and it very well could be, there have been hints about Clarence Thomas. Of course, there's questions about the health of some of the other justices. If there is a vacancy, then the Republicans in the Senate, they will fill it. And they've already pledged to do so. And when they make that step to do so, to fill a vacancy in an election year, it is going to absolutely blow apart the, the Democrats and Republicans who already are at war with each other. Okay. Mark? All of this is good for Donald Trump. Uh, you know, a quarter of Trump voters said that the Supreme Court was the number one issue for them going, uh, why they voted for Donald Trump in 2016. The more that the Supreme Court is on the front burner for voters, the better it is for the president. All right. Also, soon we will have actual voting in 2020. Uh, the polls won't matter. Andrew Yang's raising a lot of money. He says he's got real momentum. Cory Booker says, look out. He could still come back. Your thoughts on the 2020 campaign? Message means a lot more than money. We're going to be looking at the fundraising figures. Uh, Pete Buttigieg had a very strong quarter, but you know we haven't had a lot of polling lately in Iowa, and it seems to me that Buttigieg crested in December. Mm -hmm. But it looks like the two establishment, uh, the older candidates, Biden and Sanders, are having their moment right now in the national polls. Uh, you know, Biden is improving his fundraising from from a week a quarter last last cycle. Bernie Sanders seems to be raising over twenty five million dollars uh, in the fourth quarter. I think it's the two seventy eight year uh, candidates, Bernie and Biden, that are going to be the ones to watch, the ones that get the late momentum headed into the Iowa caucuses. And fears of peaking too soon, right? Susan. I kind of look at it as a question of whether Biden will be the first nominee, presidential nominee, to succeed after losing Iowa and New Hampshire since Bill Clinton. <laughs> Bill Clinton lost and became the nominee. Uh, Biden is poised to potentially lose both the early states, but he is the only one with a durable lead everywhere else. You know, he's the one with the minority backing that is absolutely 100 percent required to become the nominee. That No one else can even come close. Mark. Now, this election is Donald Trump's to lose. The Democratic field is a disaster. Joe Biden is old and fragile and not, not up for a mono mono fight. Sanders and Warren are so far left that they're going to scare away the swing voters. Pete Buttigieg, he, the left hates him because of his tack to the center, and he's a small town mayor with a lot, a lot of experience. So the field is, is great for Donald Trump. Second, impeachment is backfiring because it's energized Republican voters to see this as like the, the Kavanaugh hearings redux, except that it's Donald Trump that's actually getting smeared. And then third, the economy is booming. 57 percent of, of Americans say that they are doing better off personally, financially, since Donald Trump came into office. That doesn't mean Trump can't lose it, but the, the dynamics are there for him to win. Okay, quickly, we're running tight on time. Predictions for big issues you're watching this year. We talked about Iran and Iraq at the top of the show. North Korea. Uh, Kim Jong Un has threatened uh, missiles uh, over over the new year and in, into the new year. Uh, President Trump has been lucky that there hasn't been just a total conflagration in in in, in, in international affairs. Uh, that's something that that could be a big 
challenge for him. If the economy is going well, he may have to worry about national security. I think that the big issue is the economy. If it continues doing well, record low unemployment, uh, the stock market, S&P up 42 percent this year since the president took office. If it stays strong, I think that may deliver the president a second term. But that's the story. How does it do throughout the year? And as we get really you know, hard and heavy into the election season, if it stays strong, he's OK. If it starts to weaken, it's a real vulnerability. And I, I think it creates an opening for for Biden, who will likely be the nominee. Sure. Uh, the big story for me is going to be the Democrats' desperate effort to save their moderates and save their House majority. Uh, as soon as uh, Trump is acquitted, which he will be, uh, they're going to turn to focusing on saving those 31 House Democrats who are running in Trump districts. Already they have been giving Trump a million things that he's wanted. The legislative logjam has gone through. They're going to spend the year desperately trying to figure out how to save those people by giving Trump, by showing that they can cooperate with Trump. It'd be quite an interesting thing to see the president uh, having a USMCA ceremony at some yeah. point at the White House, probably <laughs> just right. after an impeachment trial in the Crazy Senate. Nancy. <laughs> Pelosi knows she needed to get a deal done to make sure that Congress wasn't seen as a do-nothing Congress. Yeah.